My name is Brett Chadwick with DriveLock, and today I'm going to show you around the device control functions within the DriveLock management platform. DriveLock divides device control into two logical sections. Drives is the first section. Drives are those device types that can have data written, such as floppy drives, CD, DVD, USB, firewire, and hard disks, including network connected drives. The second section is devices. This includes devices like Bluetooth, infrared modems, smart cards, and all the mobile devices, iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, and even legacy device types like tape drives, Palm devices, and BlackBerry phones. Most critical is locking down those devices included in the drive section of the DriveLock platform. However, you should be careful to review each device class and ensure you have a policy and plan to limit or at least audit the use of those classes. When locking down devices, a common approach is to simply block USB or CD DVD, but this may push users to use less common approaches to move data outside the organization. Once we open and review the drive section, you will find a global settings which will cover all the drives defined underneath drives. This will provide access to settings such as always allowing administrators the ability to access drives, specifying groups of users that can encrypt or eject devices, shadow file configuration. Shadowing is the ability to take a copy of files that are read or written to a device and where those files are stored, limits for those files and maintenance of those files. And finally, smart monitoring for those devices that support smart status updates, like hard disks. After configuring the global settings, we can delve into the, uh, into the specific device types and how we want to lock or permit those devices to function. Specific shadowing settings for each device class, custom messages for end users, options for encryption, and whether we force encryption on those device types, virus scanning of those devices, drive letter association, and any commands that we want to execute before or after devices are inserted into a machine, such as a batch file or an executable that needs to be executed to allow access or to write files to the device. And finally, we can add some granularity to those rules that we've defined in the previous section. That granularity can be defined in the drive whitelist rules where we can create whitelist templates. Those templates can consist of users or groups of users or AD users or AD groups um, that are allowed access or not allowed access to specific devices or device classes. Lastly, we can define file filter templates. <clears throat> This will allow you to prevent specific file types from being copied or removed from corporate property. For example, a user may attempt to remove sensitive spreadsheets, database files, or other critical files. File filters allow you to prevent those files from being removed, create shadow copies of those files, or perform other actions based on the types of files that users are attempting to transfer or interact with. 